This program is sponsored by Imagine Theaters, Able Ideas, Comic City, and Echo Network. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Comic Experience Sci-Fi. I'm Nick. And I'm Jill. And we're going to get things started with a bang this week. We've got Joe Johnson. And where did he go to, Jill? He went to the Detroit Institute of Art to check out the Star Wars Power of Costume exhibit. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I'm here at the DIA with Elliot Wilhelm, who's the curator of the new Star Wars exhibit here at the DIA. Elliot, pleasure to meet you. It's great to meet you. I am totally geeking out right now. Tell us what people can expect when they visit the DIA. Well, as usual, the DIA has all kinds of things to offer for just about everybody in the family. But this summer, uh, the Star Wars exhibition is, we think, going to be bringing in audiences who may never have either visited the DIA or haven't been here for many years. It's an exhibition that families are going to absolutely go crazy over. The Detroit installation is actually going to be its final stop in the United States before all of these people you see around me, Chewbacca, Han Solo, before they all go back to George Lucas's home in California. So these costumes and props are screen used, authentic. They come from the Lucasfilm archive. Yes, uh, and they were all, every costume you see, in fact, Chewbacca sitting right behind me was worn in the original uh, episode, A New Hope, back in 1977. And there are costumes and props from just about all of the Star Wars cycle, all of the major first seven Star Wars films. And we wanted to make that experience not something that was generally uh, behind glass. Some objects are, like Yoda, for example, who's a, a delicate little guy. Uh, and he's the original Yoda from, from um, The Empire Strikes Back. But for the most part, we wanted people to be able to see these costumes and study them uh, from, if possible, 360 degree perspective and get near them and to see how extraordinary, in fact, the prequels, the costumes from the prequels that, that uh, Natalie Portman wore uh, as, as Padme are really extraordinary. So this exhibit is on display through the end of September? Yeah, through September 30th, every day but Monday, you can come to this exhibition. Tickets are available in advance. If you live in the Tri-County area, you get a $5 discount on an adult ticket. Well, it's a beautiful exhibit. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. Pleasure, Pleasure meeting you. Thank you for your time. You bet. At the DIA, I'm Joe Johnson for Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi. Thanks, Joe. That was great. And I'm old enough to remember when there was only one Star Wars movie, and even then being blown away by the costumes, the Sand People, the Stormtroopers, Darth Vader. Who'd have thought there'd be so many sequels? And you know, what's a summer without sequels? Mark's going to show us some new movies coming out this week. Coming out this week at the movies... Hey, what are you doing? I'm Ant-Man. Hey, put me down. We have Ant-Man and the Wasp. As Scott Lang balances being both a superhero and a father, Hope Van Dyne and Dr. Hank Pym present an urgent new mission that finds the Ant-Man fighting alongside the Wasp to uncover a secret. Get loose now! No, no. You go low, I'll go high. I have wings. Why would I go low? We're gonna die. I don't wanna die. We didn't die! Hey, what'd I miss? We were just tiny! Next up is the first purge which is the prequel that focuses on the events that led up to the very first purge. No one's coming to help us. After tonight, nothing will ever be the same again. They forgot about one thing. They forgot about us. What have I done? Run! Stay strong, I. I'm coming. Coming out this October is motion capture expert Andy Serkis' version of The Jungle Book. 
Mowgli. But you have become a man now, Mowgli. I'm not a man. But neither am I a wolf. I think we can both agree, Mowgli, that you are something the jungle has never seen before. That's it for this week at the movies. I better get out of here before somebody purges me. Did you know there is a new spinoff to The Karate Kid called Cobra Kai? Well, Nick actually got a chance to talk to one of the original cast members, Martin Cove. Martin, how often do you get to come to these shows? Well, I guess I do three or four a year, you know, and go to choice locations. I like to go to New York and go down to Florida. And I guess here in Detroit, you know, it was instrumental in my career because I did Streetcar Named Desire here at the Meadowbrook Theater. And then about two weeks later, I moved to to LA. And, you know, it sort of gave me a lot of confidence doing a play here. And so whenever I get a chance to come to Detroit, I do because I have good feelings about this place. What do you enjoy about coming to these shows? I enjoy the fact that you can go see, aside from, you know, money in general, I mean, but you get a chance to see actors and friends that work your shows, whether you were doing Cagney and Lacey. It's like one of those, you know, the network syndicated functions that happen every May in New York. Same thing here, you get to see actors that you haven't had a chance. I mean, when I was in London, I saw the Game of Thrones cast, which is my favorite show in the world, and Karate Kid was their, one of their favorite movies. So. It's just, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, Penny Dreadful and go there and see, you know, Ava Green if you're lucky, you know. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I see there's something here about bullying. Is this a uh, message you're trying to spread or do you have some sort of a cause? Yeah, I work, um, I, I actually go and give seminars uh, in, uh, in, well, around the country. And I talk a lot about, I have an 11-minute video and I talk a lot about bullying. and. At one time, I was working with a psychologist named Sue Ellen Freed, and I would come in and we chose scenes from Karate Kid. And Columbia is always so helpful and gave us the stuff, you know, um, gratis. And this character was such a bully that I can talk about the ways to eliminate being. There's no true solution, but if you ever meet a guy like John Kreese, I talk about, you know, what you can do to avoid to avoid being thrown into the dean's office, you know? Because uh, it's a tricky situation being bullied and how to cope with it. Martin Cole at Motor City Comic Con. Thank you so much, sir. Have a great show. Good job, Nick. No mercy. Well, anyways, we gotta go to commercial break. Stick around, we'll be back with more comics, beer, and sci-fi. The magic of movies and more isn't just our tagline. We believe in its truth. A movie theater auditorium where wonderful stories unfold is a magical place. Whether a two-hour film, a three-hour epic, or merely the anticipation of viewing trailers, your every viewing experience is very important to us. Imagine's a pure Michigan company, founded and operated by Michigan natives. And moviegoers like you aren't just customers, you're our guests. So when it comes to moviegoing, we know you have a choice. And on behalf of our entire team, thank you for choosing Imagine. Welcome back to Comic Experience Sci-Fi, everybody. Coming up next is the gaming segment with Samantha, and she has some new old games. What the heck is new old games? Just watch. Hi, guys. This is Samantha with Comic Experience Sci-Fi, and this week we're going to talk about some classic games that have gotten a facelift. Coming out this month is Sonic Mania Plus for all your favorite consoles.
Coming this fall, expect to see Spiral Reignited Trilogy. That's it for this week. See you next time. This has been Samantha with Comics Beer and Sci-Fi. Well, now in comic book news, we have a couple local favorites, SourcePoint Press and Twisted, have teamed up for one and maybe even another uh, one-off comic book called Haunted Hions. Ooh. Don't you mean, ooh, dude. Yeah. I um, was uh, working with Gary Reed at Caliber Comics at the time. And uh, I published my book, Right or Wrong, A Writer's Guide to Creating Comics, through Gary. And he knew that I also had a, a background in music journalism. So he was talking to Twisted about doing the book together. And then when he found out about that, he said, I know just a guy. They gave me their idea, uh, the loose idea that they had. I fleshed it out, kind of added some, a little bit of flair to it and things like that. And I said, well, it's funny because I happen to know an amazing art team that I've been desperately wanting to work with. Uh, they're from Italy, and I said, and I think this could be just the book for them. He told us to do just a quick um, sketch, a first sketch of Twisted, and I did it in less time than expected, and it worked, and they liked it. Well, I uh, don't usually color comics, do color for comics. I am a graphic designer, among other things. But uh, it all came up uh, very natural. Uh, we were looking at uh, album covers from the guys and I saw, well, they already have a palette, let's take it and turn it into a realistic color for the book. Right out the gate, we started noticing that nationwide, because we travel so often to all these different conventions, that everybody had heard about the comic, which was fantastic. They all uh, laugh at it because it's really funny and the story is good, it's spooky. I think they, they will like it. It's had such a fantastic reaction that we are going to be doing more. Uh, so they'll be look forward to more Twisted Comics in the future. Oh man, what's next, man? We're gonna go to Q, what's new with TV? Q, man. This is the Q from Comics Man and Sci-Fi and I'm here to pay the bills. Let's talk about these two CW shows. First, The Outpost. Follows a girl named Talon whose family gets killed, she kills the killers, she gets superpowers, and she saves the world. What else can you want? I waited a long time to find the men who killed my family. I'm not walking away now. I'm here for work, as a barmaid. Nobody comes to the outpost to find work. People come here because they're running from something. Not me. Well, let's talk about the next CW show, Charm. And it's actually a reboot. New cast, new characters, and I still won't be watching it. What the? There is a reasonable explanation. There we are. You are charmed once. The most powerful trio of witches. This is crazy. I am not a witch. I don't even like wearing witch costumes on Halloween. Like, not even slutty ones. Mom wanted us to do this, and now we can figure out who killed her. Looks like something in the underworld knows you three had your powers activated. <laughs> Throughout history, strong women were called witches, and they are. We are. We have to the night. Maybe we can do this like once a month and never on Saturday night. Maggie! Okay, fine, fine. I'm in. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have shut you out. And Macy, 
you're not alone anymore. We're sisters. You're better together. Your differences are your strengths. And nothing is stronger than your sisterhood. This has been the Q from Compass Man Sci-Fi. I just paid the bills. Thanks, Q. And now we're going to take another break. Stay tuned for more Comic Spear and Sci-Fi. comic book production company where we bring your ideas to life. Come check out our Birmingham office and see how we do here at Able Ideas. Okay guys, you're almost there, but we need to make it look more real. It needs to pop off the page and grab it. Let's make it happen. Let's go drop in on the art team. Our team. Our clients want more realism. Check out our website, ableideas.com. Make sure you order your comic books, and I gotta get out of here. Bye, guys! Go, 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 go. Welcome back to Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi, everybody. Jill, is it time for the beer segment yet? Well, actually, we have a special treat for you this week. Bradcast actually took a trip to New England to a cider house. I'll squeeze the cider out of his Adam's apple. Hey, it's the Bradcast, and we are at Down East Cider Brewery. Or is it cidery? Uh, technically, we don't brew, so uh, we say Down East Cider House. We are at Down East Cider House. I am here with Ross Brockman, the owner of this fine establishment. Ross, tell me about the company, how you started, what's it all about? Me and some buddies, uh, I'm sure a story you've heard before, me and some buddies, like every brewery starts, right. me and some buddies. But, me and some buddies, we went to school up in Maine, and one of my friends from school, his family has owned an apple orchard for several generations, and so we started making hard cider when we were living on the farm as sort of a something to do while we were studying, and about, this was in 2011, and that's when, um, you know, in the wake of craft beer, cider started to emerge, it was white hot, we had no idea what we were doing, but the category, was exploding and empty and uh, here we are still doing it seven years later. In your tap room there are many many varieties tell me about some of them and how they came to be. We have straight up cider we have drier side which is a drier version of our unfiltered cider double blend is a big uh, higher ABV version and then the yellow cans that you see all around are uh, it's Aloha Friday the underlying piece of all of our cider is unfiltered. The reason that you don't see much unfiltered cider is because it's really difficult to make and keep stable because the, the little bits that make it cloudy, uh, that's little pieces of apple and yeast and that wants to ferment and when you get fermentation inside of a enclosed vessel, boom. Do you have any plans on expanding and or getting any kind of distribution chain so that we in the Midwest can enjoy your product? For a small independent company like ours, slow and steady is the, uh, is the best way to do it. We're in parts of Ohio, so we're, we are starting to develop the Midwest. Michigan, Illinois, Wisconsin, those are, all, uh, those are all on the docket. Thank you for your time, sir. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. We love your product. Keep up the good work. This has been a Bradcast from Down East Cider House. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Brad, for that edition of Comic Cider and Sci-Fi. Hey, Nick, do you remember Care Bears? Yes, I haven't a Care Bear in the world. Well, there's a guy who makes a horror version called Scare Bear. <laughs> My name is Jay. I am the creator of Scare Bears. I have uh, five kids, and I was inspired by this one day when my little boy was hitting my daughter with a teddy bear and kind of just messed around and came up with the idea, and here it is. I make one-of-a-kind uh, teddy bears and other creepy critters. Anything that's plush, I can pretty much do this to it. So I've been doing it for about seven years now as a joke. I've been selling them publicly for about five. My teenage daughter would share an image with her friend, and uh, that would friend would send it to another. You know how it snowballs, and then the chatter was people wanted them. So I was like, well, I'll try to sell them and see what happens. And um, the first street fair that I ever did, uh, the weather was crappy all weekend, and. Um, Sunday the church got out, the weather got better, 
and uh, that's when I had record sales. <laughs> that's when I was really selling them. Um, all the church crowd were going nuts over them. They thought it was hilarious. So some people are a little bit freaked out by them, um, but for the most part, there's an element of humor to all of them. If you get a close look at them, I mean, they're so ridiculous. How can you not laugh? So I love doing comic cons because you get a either a really eager response. They, they really love them. You know, they're like, oh wow, these are great. And then you get half the other, the other half are like running the other direction. They're terrified of them, and that's just as great to me, especially when it's the adults. The kids, I never really had an issue with kids freaking out over them. I have had adult men like scream and run away. Generally, there's like a six to eight week wait for any bear, no matter what it is. It's scarebears1.com, scarebears1.com. Ooh, that's scary. <laughs> Well, now we're going to go over to Casey. Hey, this is Comic Book Casey, or I should say Comic Car Casey. We are here with my man Jason Weller. He has a couple cool cars here at the Planet Comic Con in Kansas City, Missouri. And right now, we are standing right by the car from Harry Potter. Um, it's, it's a replica. It's not an actual real car from the movie, but it's just like the, as close to the real ones on the movies as, as I can make it. It's a 1962 Ford Anglia. Uh, this particular one was a left-hand drive. I moved the steering wheel over to the passenger side to make it more screen accurate. Um, it's a roller right now. We didn't have time to get the motor and trans finished, but that's what we're going to try to get that down the road. But the, the first movie that you see this car in is the Chamber of Secrets. This car, we just literally finished it last week. If you get closer to it, you can smell the fumes coming off the paint. So we're gonna add more as we go. Um, so that's why I'm starting to feel a little high right now because I did smell it. I just didn't want to say anything, but I'm starting to feel a little good right now. Yeah, it's, it turned out great. We're happy with it. We left it a little rough around the edges, but that matches more the movie car. Well, this is a great car, great replica. I see that the Harry Potter owl is in the back seat and I see the Harry Potter scarf. Yeah, we, we try to, the devil's in the details and we really try to go all out when we build these vehicles. Thank you, Jason, for your time. Thank you for showing us the car. And this is Comic Book Casey at the Planet Comic Con in Kansas City, checking out the Harry Potter car. And now it's time for another commercial. Stay tuned for more comics, beer, and sci-fi. The magic of movies and more isn't just our tagline, we believe in its truth. A movie theater auditorium where wonderful stories unfold is a magical place. Whether a two hour film, a three hour epic, or merely the anticipation of viewing trailers, your every viewing experience is very important to us. Imagine's a pure Michigan company, founded and operated by Michigan natives. And moviegoers like you aren't just customers, you're our guests. So when it comes to movie going, we know you have a choice. And on behalf of our entire team, thank you for choosing Imagine. Welcome back to Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi, everybody. Cosplay time, Joe. What do you got for us? Yes, Mark got to interview husband and wife cosplayers at the Motor City Comic Con. The couple that cosplays together stays together. Yes, indeed. And the wife was dressed as one of my favorite DC characters. Hey, this is Mark at the 2018 Motor City Comic Con. I'm here with Stephanie of the Mitten State Cosplay. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. And yourself? Great. This is an awesome costume. Now, how long have you been doing cosplay? Just for a couple of years. Big DC fan, hot girl fan. I've always been a huge Halloween enthusiast and always building and making props and costumes. So how is this costume actually constructed? What kind of material is used on it? The frame is made out of aluminum tubing and it is powered by two two-inch actuators and it has two seven-volt batteries connected to a three-way switch here on my belt. Who built this? Myself and my husband built the frames for the wings. Now, your wife Stephanie told us that you're the brainchild behind all this. You construct all this stuff. How long have you been building these costumes? Uh, this has been taking about six months. That's, well, it's an awesome costume, and thanks for talking to us, man. This is Mark from the Motor City Comic Con. Thanks, Mark. That hot girl costume was amazing. Indeed it was. Well, it's time for our final segment. Here's Richie with this week's home video releases. Yes, it's me, Richie. 
we're back for another exciting week. This week, I bring you a couple comedies. The first one up is Blockers. This raunchy comedy stars Leslie Mann, You Can't See Him, John Cena, and Ike Barinholtz as parents who try to stop their daughters from having sex on prom night. Fully planning on having sex tonight. Wherever the night takes us. The night's gonna take us there. Wherever the wind sails our ships. Your ship is going into my harbor. <laughs> They're getting away. WWVVD. What would Vin Diesel do? Hey, Fast and the Furious is completely unrealistic. It's not a documentary. I get that. I'll do anything for my daughter. What about a chugging contest? Bring it. No, no, we're chugging, right? <laughs> we're butt chugging. On the count of three. Oh. They got a lager or an IPA. Oh. Does it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Oh my God. Jesus, he's spit roasting himself. Post, run! Post, run! Oh. Aspen! Oh, oh! Next up is the horror comedy sequel, Another Wolf Cop. And if you haven't guessed it already, it's about a werewolf cop. What the hell is that sound? Wolf cop. Wolf cop. Wolf cop. Yeah, there's a new cop in the streets. Lou? You're a wolf. Cop. Dumping dead bodies in my duffel bag. Slash your face, rip the head off your body. Slam a cold door and pump your body with the shoddy. Don't bother trying to hide, cause there's nowhere you can run from the wolf cop. You promised me you would stay locked up. Where's your car? Try to hide from the wolf cop. I want its hairy head on my mantle cap. Oh, damn. <laughs> Mr. Wolfie got a plan. Forget Frankenstein. Bring it on, beast man. Is that fool? This looks on it back. Woo! Cause I'm the wolf cop. Yeah. This looks like I'd run a knife to a wolf fight. Well, that's it for this week. Be sure to tune in next time. And Emma, baby. I got my dancing shoes. I'll see you in the Hollywood Hills in about five hours. Well, that does it for another episode of Comic Spear and Sci-Fi. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we will see you next week. Do you think anyone's still watching? Nah, I think they turned it off by now. You can probably do whatever you want. Yeah, like this. Well, if anyone was watching, they're not now. Mm -hmm.